This is the problem. A talking head and a white background. Academic aesthetics, that's what we're talking about. Academia is a place that uh, has very little room for messiness. John Law has been... Uh, Sorry, I must... Dat nog een keer overdoen. Had ik John Law al genoemd, want die is eigenlijk wel. Nee. So the sociologist John Law once said, academics distort reality into clarity. And I think that's a fantastic phrase. Academics distort reality into clarity. And with John Law, I'm looking for, for an alternative, a mode of reporting on reality which is hospitable to the messiness of the world. Film offers alternatives for anthropological reporting. My research is an ongoing attempt to explore this medium for social science research. The essay film is a particularly promising genre as it brings images and words uh, next to each other. I don't know where you looked at, but you should watch into the lens. Uh huh. Where, where was I looking at? I don't know. Shouldn't we think that messiness is probably part and parcel? of each and every human life. And shouldn't we then also not think about possibilities to put that given uh, into our reports? Oh, kun je niet eigenlijk dit hele proces juist in zijn falen laten zien? Is dat eigenlijk niet waar we het hier over hebben? One of the great things of film uh, for me, at least, is that it is very hospitable to ambiguity. As a filmmaker, obviously, I'm trying to, to impose my uh, understanding of things onto these images, but images have the capacity to resist whatever I try to make of them. I can try to uh, put them in a certain order uh, so that you get a certain narrative, but the images always give you clues to other possible narratives. And I think that is what, what makes film a very interesting uh, medium for the kind of anthropology that I do. In my particular research, where I go to places that are characterized by uh, the lack of order, by the disintegration of orders, their film becomes a ve very relevant medium. So the film I made in Brazil is called Possibility of Spirits. I've noticed that many anthropologists uh, studying spirit possession cults take the notion of spirits for granted. They say, uh, oh, these people believe in spirits and this is the name of the spirit and what have you. Uh, but they never ask the question, but what is a spirit? And my research shows that uh, it's best to think about spirits in terms uh, of a possibility. And what I show in the film is how people cultivate that possibility to bring this possibility of spirits into being. You see a priest being possessed by a spirit. My voiceover comes in and tells you that this priest has been possessed by a spirit called Oshosi. If I would write that sentence, the man was possessed by Oshosi, you would take that for granted. You would say, okay, I'll, I'll take that from you. Now that you see a man being possessed by a spirit called Oshosi, you're immediately aware that this is a very empty kind of uh, uh, explanation as to what it is that you're seeing. Uh, you're also seeing that you don't know what it is that you are looking at. And this is exactly the kind of doubt and instability that I want to bring into uh, my report on, uh, on Candomblé, on this spirit possession cult. Film allows me to suggest what possibly a spirit might be. And it's exactly that state of half knowing, of not knowing, of thinking that you know, that film uh, brings into being. Writing, and especially social science writing, asks much more for clear statements as to how are we going to define the notion of spirit, what is it exactly. Film doesn't ask for that kind of precision. Film is a much more open medium, uh, much more evocative, uh, and much less absolutist in the kind of knowledge it produces uh, uh, about a phenomenon such as uh, a spirit possession.